Hi, scholars. Welcome to lesson 11 in our, Elizabeth, in our <laughs> exploration and colonization study. It is our last lesson today in our study. A kind of a wrap up of our work with a lesson on something that was touched upon in many of the lessons along the way. So our objective today, what we are going to be studying and looking at today in our lesson, we will learn about the beginnings of the slave trade when Europeans began enslaving Africans and Native Americans. So a little more detail to that beyond just the fact that they were right, capturing and enslaving people from Africa and the Native people living in the lands that they were finding. So a little more information and detail to that. It starts with this red arrow. The slave trade using enslaved Africans was started in 1415 when the Portuguese seized the city in the North African coast. So you're seeing Sueta right there. And you'll recall that in our earlier lesson of Portugal, it was Portuguese, the Portuguese who began enslaving people simply based on the color of their skin. And this is from where they were getting the people who they were enslaving. Spanish and Portuguese colonists found that sugar was a, ca was a cash crop they could grow in the southern areas like the Caribbean. In order to make a profit, they would plant many acres and then use slave labor, right? Giving them even more money. So scholars, that area that I circled right there, I'm gonna scoot that over, right? These are the Caribbean islands, what became known as the West Indies. The equator is right near that area. So it's a great place for growing crops like sugarcane, which is what you're seeing in this picture. When they planted the sugarcane, they would plant a whole lot of it and then use the enslaved Africans to harvest the sugarcane and then work to make it into rum to sell in Europe. When Columbus landed in the Caribbean islands, Spanish colonies were set up in order to get the wealth of the Americas back to Spain. So Portugal, you'll remember, had some of the land holdings in kind of this area. And then Columbus landing in the West Indies, the Caribbean islands, right here in these black island spots that you can see. He is also in his quest to set up these colonies, hoping to bring money back for Spain. So Spanish colonies in South America didn't at first use enslaved Africans, but what they did is they enslaved the native people, right? The people that were native to South America and to the islands near there and used the natives as slaves to gather large amounts of gold and silver to mine and bring back to Spain to help Spain with money making. So looking at this map, scholars, you can see land claims that were made by the Netherlands, right, this little green area, by France, the blue area. The purple is land claimed by Spain, and the maroon land claimed by Portugal. We have Brazil over here. Right? A large chunk of this would be Brazil. So what I want you to notice, scholars, right? This is a lot of land now being claimed by countries in Europe, land that already had native people living on it who were now being right, conquered and 
forced into slave work for money making for these other countries. Elmina was a Portuguese and later Dutch trade center for slavery. So the fort in this picture that you can see, this drawing of this fort, was built in Ilmina, and it's where slaves were imprisoned before they were being shipped to the Americas. So here's a more detailed look at right, where Elmina was on this map of Africa. And then again, the drawing right, where enslaved Africans were kept right, as they were being gathered and then kept as they waited for right, maybe a ship to arrive to then take them to the Americas, so North America and South America, to work as slaves working on sugar, the sugar cane plantations or mining for gold or silver, perhaps later. In just a little over 300 years, more than 20,000 voyages were made with enslaved Africans to be sold in Brazil, the Caribbean, and the English colonies. So the red circle scholars is what is now Brazil, the area of Brazil. The blue, the Caribbean islands, right? Those West Indies we talked about where the sugarcane plantations were. And then later, the English colonies where the green circle is, right? We know that's the East Coast of the United States now, but in the 1500s, 1600s, and most of the 1700s, that green circle was English colonies, where you will see as we get further along in the late 1600s and into the 1700s, more enslaved Africans are being brought over. So I'm going to click on this, and you'll see the black dots representing ships, right? Over 20,000 ships in this 300 year period coming to these three locations carrying enslaved Africans. So notice the year is up here, right? right 1500 the 1570s, right. are you seeing? So not many enslaved Africans are being moved, but now look at it starting to right, increase. At the early 1600s, several ships carrying enslaved Africans going to this area. Brazil and this area in the Caribbean. And the reason not much is moving here right now to what is the East Coast of the United States, this land hasn't really been claimed and colonized yet by England. So now it's starting to be colonized and starting to grow. So think each of those black dots is a ship carrying many enslaved Africans, each one of those dots. See, so early 1700s, a lot of ships. So now we're at the middle 1700s. A 
the later 1700s. And if you didn't notice, there's a lot less going here to the east coast of what is the United States by that time. And we'll study why that is a little later in the year. Now we're nearing the, about the middle of the 1800s. All right. And if you didn't notice the table here at the bottom, right, again, it names the Caribbean brazil and the mainland of north america right those three areas that were circled so you can see the number of enslaved africans being brought to the caribbean to brazil and to the mainland of north america during that time right the bottom are the years so kind of a slower lower number but then by the 1700s it really increases from the 1700s to 1860 right? especially brazil and the caribbean so that's a look at the beginnings of the slave trade when Europeans began enslaving Africans and Native Americans. It gives you a little more of the why. Not that it was okay to do, but the why they were doing it, right? Looking for workers to mine gold and silver and workers to work in the sugar cane plantations of the Caribbean. We're going to get into much more of the study of the slave trade and the treatment of enslaved Africans and Native Americans later on in the year. But this gives you a really good introduction. So to review, you'll want to open the assignment, our Google form, and answer the questions about today's lesson. You may look back at the lesson for help. Go back to those slides, listen again to any information I said. Remember, click submit at the bottom of your Google form. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed our study of colonization and exploration and are ready next week for our next study.